Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Charles DeBance. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment. And we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. So today we're going to be talking about them damn Clippers uh, again after what took place uh, last night. But before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and sub to the channel. And be sure to hit all notifications if you have it already. So yesterday, the Clippers were playing game five of the best of seven series between the Dallas Mavericks. And going into that game, it was the series was tied 2-2, thanks to the heroics of Paul George and James Harden and some of the other players in game four in Dallas. Going into this game, I genuinely thought that the Clippers were going to be competitive in this game. I really, I really, I mean, I, I don't know what I thought, but I, that's what I, that's what I believe. So going into the game, I was watching the first quarter. Then I started watching the second quarter. I'm like, man, these guys, uh, they don't look serious. The way that they allowed the Dallas Mavericks to get that 12 point lead and James Harden wasn't really playing well. Paul George wasn't really playing well. So I was like, all right, let me go take a shower, come back. And I opened up my computer to watch the uh, other half. And then looking at the Dallas Mavericks, just just essentially started blowing the Clippers out of the gymnasium uh, in the second half. If I look at the second half, folks, it was an absolute uh, it was an absolute. It was an absolute bloodbath. The Dallas Mavericks totally dismantled the Clippers. They were plus 10 on the scoreboard. Paul George was only 2 of 4. Um, James Harden was 0 of 1. And if I look at the second half of that game, uh, in the second half, the Clippers were down 12 going into halftime. The Clippers were outscored by 20 points in the second half, plus the, pot, the plus that they had um, on them going into the half. They ended up losing by 30 points which ended up becoming the worst loss in the history of that organization. And I'm like, I, I cut off the game. Like I cut off the game around 5 a.m. My time. I'm like, man, I'm going to bed. Usually I'll stay up to do these lives, but I'm like, nah, man, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not interested in doing that. Some people got on me. Oh no, stay up, stay up, stay up. I understand that. But I was like, nah, I'm not staying up uh, for that. So when I woke up this morning, I said to myself, I said, okay, uh, today we need to react to this game and 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 really understand what the hell is going on and what could potentially be going on in the future uh, if the Clippers were to lose this series. So that's when I, that's what we want to get into. But before we even get into that, this video is brought to you by our sponsor, Prize Picks, which is the largest daily uh, fantasy sports platform in North America. Prize Picks is really simple. Instead of just selecting a team, you just select two or more players, pick more or less their projected stats. And then you place your entry. For example, this week, I'm selecting two entries. Stephen Curry for more than 25 points. And then I got Anthony Davis for more than two blocks. And Damian Lillard for more for more than four three-pointers made. Price Picks is also the only daily sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So, for example, if you have a player who gets injured in the first half and doesn't return to the second half, that player gets automatically rebooted. What I also love about Price Picks is that it offers weekly promotions like Taco Tuesdays. Each Tuesday, Price Picks discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. So go to pricepicks.com/clns and use code CLNS for a first deposit match of up to $100. That's go to pricepick.com/clns use code CLNS for a first deposit match to of up to $100. And remember, whenever you support this sponsor, you're supporting this channel. Thank you. So let me just give you guys my thoughts on the Clippers here. Listen, um, I don't know if the Clippers are going to consider bringing back Kawhi Leonard in game six. At this point, if I'm the Clippers, I bring him back. The reason is simple. Because of what's at stake. Um, you don't bring him back. Chances are you probably will lose game six um, to Dallas. And therefore, you saved him for nothing. He's gone. Like, series is over. Excuse me. But if you play him, you at least roll the dice and try to see. Now, has Kawhi Leonard been doing any, you know, drills and contact drills and all of that? I don't know. I have no idea. It remains to be seen. I think the Clippers are going to play again on Friday, tomorrow. So you have that aspect of it. If they win game six, then the series goes on and we'll see what's what. But in the case of the, uh, the but in the case they lose, 
What does this mean for the Clippers? Well, as you guys are aware, Steve Ballmer just made a massive investment of over a billion dollars into a brand new arena for his fans, for himself, team, whatever. And a lot of people were saying that it would have been it would have been great for the Clippers to win a championship and then go into that new arena. It would have been electrifying. But at this particular moment, I don't I'm not 100 percent certain that that's going to happen. Because even if the Clippers were to win this series, what's Kawhi going to look like moving forward in these playoffs? And is he going to come back at all? No one really knows. Which then kind of fast forwards us a little bit. And I want to quickly fast forward into the future for a moment. If you just bear with me. What, what if the Clippers lost? What should be the course of action moving forward? Well, here's, here's what I think. As things currently stand, Kawhi Leonard is the only player with, a, with an extension with the Clippers. Paul George has not been extended. James Harden has, been, has not been extended. If the Clippers were to lose this series, and let's say Kawhi Leonard does not come back, they need to blow up the entire thing. This is just my personal view. I could be wrong, but some people can think I'm wrong, whatever. This is just my personal view. I think this amalgamation of talent uh, has not worked. In the five years of this experiment, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard have only been healthy for one of those five years, and that was during the 2020 run, where they blew that 3-1 lead to the Nuggets. Since then, Kawhi Leonard missed a year. Kawhi Leonard gets injured in the playoffs two times. That game, uh, round two, last year, round one. This year, even before the playoffs, and then Paul George missing. So, listen, and then Paul George didn't play in the playoffs last year. So, four out of the five times these guys have tried to go into the playoffs, one or the other has been missing in action one or the other four out of the five that's 80 percent of the time 80 percent of the time these guys have not been uh, together in the playoffs they've only been together one time and they're probably that 2020 run was the best chance they had to win the championship so if they lose i think you need to consider blowing this thing up yesterday if you look at the performances of some of these guys now james harden has his thing you know people say about him but i want to focus on paul george for a second because paul george is the guy that's been there and paul george is supposed to be the number two guy paul george finished that game yesterday with 15 points on 30 percent shooting from the field the only bright spot for the clippers i see was terrence mann who was playing good defense and aggressive offensively at least in that first half norman powell coming off the bench with 14 and avisa zubak with 15 and 6 and five, which is not even enough. Six rebounds. That's not even enough. Paul George scored 15 points. James Harden scored seven points. Seven points. Listen, um, I would just blow it up and I would call it a wrap on this thing. Now, what would the Clippers do with Kawhi? Well, they've already extended him. Would they consider trading him? Possibly. He's still an asset. Uh, but I would I would call it a wrap on this particular iteration of players and go out there and try to get younger. And look for something else. You keep Norman Powell. You keep Terrence Mann. You keep Avicii Zubak. You try to retain Ty Lue if possible. And you try to go get more reliable stars to, to, to go out there and put out a better product. All right. People that are going to be available. But I, would, I wouldn't I would be mad if the Clippers decided to move off Kawhi, move off of Harden, move off of Paul George. There have been rumblings of New York, Paul George going to New York or Indiana, wherever it is. Or or, or is it the the, the, the the Magic or whatever other team I've heard, whatever. But that would be it. And I think we I think after this year, I personally have seen enough and I'm not interested in another. Oh, there's a new arena. Let's give it another. I'm not interested in that. I'm not going to hold my breath for that long. Some people may, or some people are willing to do it. I'm personally not. I'm 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 cashing out on this. This 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 if, if the Clippers were a stock that you invested in five years ago, that stock would have gone up by a few dollars. And then for the, the last four years, the stock has been dropping. And if you're telling me to keep holding on to my money for hope for four years and the stock has been declining, you know what? You keep your money in, 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 in that company. I'm going to cash out and you let me know how much of your earnings you're able to retain. That's my view on this. Whatever you guys think, leave your thoughts in the comments and we catch you guys on the next show. Peace.